This is Douglas Deschert, and I'd like to welcome our viewing audience to this iteration of the Ale and Quail Club, where we'll be discussing the proposition that art will break your heart. And to lead off, we're going to go into the paradox, I think it's paradoxical, that talent doesn't equate with virtue or character. And that subject lends itself to what I call clickbait, which is nasty stories about vile and reprehensible, reprehensible behavior on the part of famous artists and people in the art business. I'll start by mentioning something never reported before. It's special to me from a private source impeccable credentials. Going back to when Andy Warhol, that titan of modernism, or postmodernism, whatever he was, when Andy Warhol died, a major auction house was granted the rights to sell his home furnishings, his art collection, and all his belongings. So the major auction house sent a very skilled director over to itemize and basically evaluate everything that Warhol owned. Now this happened so quickly that Warhol's metaphorical bed was still warm and the yellow tape was barely off the door. So everything was exactly as Warhol had left it. And in Warhol's bedroom, said appraiser, found hundreds of Polaroid snapshots of prepubescent naked little boys. Now, I say that that should be part of the evaluation of Warhol, his character, and his entire oeuvre. That's enough clickbait on Warhol for now. I'm going to hand the discussion over to Benefit. Ben of Shea. Ben of Shea. Zend. Zend. Yes. <laughs> and my estimable colleague, Anthony Hayden, guest, the legend, the man. You guys take it away. Let's hear, let's hear about the characters of, say, the Halcyon days, the 80s. Herring, Besquiat, and the rest of them. Yeah. You guys talk. I'll just chime in once in a while. Well, I was um, at the Shafrazi Gallery at that time in the 80s, late 80s, for several years. And that was when Herring, that was, it was before Herring died and actually during the time that he was, he was actually, um, you know, getting worse and, and finally passed away. And, um, and it was also after Basquiat's passing. Basquiat was was very easy to work with. He was never a pain. He was very, you know, actually kind of modest and humble and got along with everyone, though he was very quiet and he wasn't very, very sort of, um, he wasn't demanding, in other words. He wasn't so a guy we, who... We got no dirt with Basquiat. No, with Basquiat there was, there was no dirt. And there were several... I Herring, several, Herring had a, a myth promulgated about him. Yeah, and the myth the myth about it, about uh, about Keith's AIDS was a very um, it's a kind of a sordid story about how he caught AIDS from um, someone that he had had sex with in Brazil, and then when he returned and found out that he had AIDS, he continued to have sex with people without letting them know that he had AIDS or HIV. Back in those days, my friends and I called that the homo hit squad. You know, going out spreaders, as it were. His myth doesn't incorporate that possibly salient truth, does it? No, but I mean, you know, look, I think, I think it's sort of always expected for artists to have be bad boys and, and t sort of tough girls. Um, when Amen I was... that. When I, when it, during the time that I was I was uh, in the art world, um, I, I can tell you uh, uh, the big huge stories of the fun actions carried out by the Gorilla Girls. Oh yeah. And how 
you know, and, and those were excite those were really exciting days because those some of those women were really, you know, powerhouse artists. Um, you know, like um, Nancy Spiro, for example. Uh, and the stuff that that those people were doing was was really exciting. But the point is, is that at the same time that that was going on, and a lot of interesting things were happening in the in the art world, um, somehow everybody was be, it, it, the atmosphere was so that you couldn't move a muscle because everybody was looking, everybody was judging, and if you breathed the wrong way, it would it would just you know become a scandal. Ah, and, scandal. Oh yeah, and and I was in the I was dead center of of one of the nastier moments of the art world in those days, um, because I was constantly getting into arguments with characters like Christian Lee, who was really an awful character. He was. Now we're talking. Vent that spirit. Oh yeah, yeah. Christian Lee. Christian Lee did things that were unacceptable, and everybody. Like what? So Woody he Burns. he so he was constantly um, bullying bullying people who were who were who he had to work with. Rather than be kind and be be helpful and be every any person that crossed Christian Lee's path, unless it was somebody who was moneyed would either get the shaft because you know he would want something from them they wouldn't give it to him or they would confront him with something that th that he had done usually you know taking a, taking a piece and never g returning it wow. claiming claiming that that he didn't have it uh, uh, you Seen know I mean, a lot of that around oh yeah and he had very very sticky fingers and and so and it was it was bizarre he was a it was, he was maybe, I don't know, 5'5", five, five, must have been about 300 pounds. Um, he was wall-eyed. Built like a bowling ball. Huh? And, and, one, and everybody was scared of, of this guy. And he was, he was, you know, young. He was maybe, I don't know, in his late 20s, early 30s. But the power he wielded, it was bizarre. It was just like mind control over some of the gal. <laughs> when I was working at the thread waxing space after Chef Razi, um, the way this guy used to throw his weight around was, was unbelievable. And when I left thread waxing under the most hor horrible conditions, um, and, and they really made my, uh, Tim Nye, who was the, owner of thread waxing and I was the, the director of it I brought all of my uh, my uh, contacts I brought Anthony in to help us with a spread for Vanity Fair um, everything that I, I could come to the gallery with I brought it um, took a huge pay cut um, and dealt with a kid who was extremely wealthy but who had absolutely um, no experience in the art world. He, was, he had a, a painter girlfriend. He was um, with Jacqueline Humphreys at the time. And um, everything that he did was, again, with his flying monkey uh, artist friends who were hanging around him. And if, the sycophants. The sycophants. And, and, and if, if, for example, I, as the director of the gallery, 10 years older with all of these people that I'd brought over with me, with all of the, um, you know, contacts, anything that you can imagine that I went in there with, it was, it ended up being nothing more than, um, okay, now that I've got all of the, inf all of your contacts, all of the information that you have, everything that you could do for us, and you took a pay cut, uh, thank you very much, you're out of here because um, you spent... Uh, seven hundred dollars over the limit of your expense account, and so this ended up becoming the big scandal that got me out of the thread waxing space and made and basically destroyed my art career after that. So for two years after, though, af I started a space of my own, and I and I had really wonderful artists showing. Um, I couldn't I couldn't make a sale, and I couldn't get get my gallery off the ground, so I walked out of the art world. Art will break your heart. 
Anthony, chime in. Yeah, okay. By the way, Christian Lee put some of my drawings to show in the Venice Biennale. Uh, I last saw him. It's, it was, we waved to each other. He was sailing on a boat underneath one of the others on top of a bridge. He disappeared, as you know. No one knows what happened to Christian Lee. Okay. Big surprise now, I there. Think, I think you are wholly wrong in making a moral link between art making and... It's like, it's like business or finance. There are lots of horrible businessmen and horrible politicians who are pretty good at what they do. I don't think there's a necessary moral link. And this talk about Warhol, so what? People have weird sex lives. Um, it doesn't, it's, this doesn't mean they make bad. I know lots of good, decent people who make very boring art, you know, and I know lot, there's lots of reprehensible people Caravaggio was a murderer, you know, and uh, they make way a lot. I, I think. Yeah, we're not talking uh, about we're not talking about art. We're talking about art dealers. Art dealers, well, like well, like I Christian. Well, no, is, I'm is, sorry, is, Doug. Awesome. Doug was brought in, bringing in the whole art world. I know that. Beginning but, with the but, artists. But, you're, but you are you're talking right, about Anthony, the difference always, between the artist and the art that they make. I, I was agree with that. At talent versus virtue. <laughs> Talent versus virtue conundrum. in the artist, not in the art dealer, not in the uh, in the curator, not in the and you know I'm sorry I'm not going to excuse I I have excused a lot of are bad attitudes. Clickbait, in my opinion, I love stories about crooks. I love exposing. I'm sure you do, crooks. but they're not necessarily relevant. Well, I was hoping that we could share some more stories. I know the horrible stories, but I don't consider them really relevant to the way the art world does its business. Yes, it does. But yes, it does, Ant, because I'll tell you, one of the things that is really, really horrible in being in the end, working in the art world, being a curator, having to deal with neuros the neuroses of the artist 24-7, yeah, and, no. and, dancing, and dancing to all their tunes, and doing everything they want, which, which a good dealer does in a, in, you know, within reason, of course, but the point is, is that that is the artist. It's not the art dealer. I'm talking about people who were around the art world. Okay, I, had, I worked for Tony Shafrazi. Tony Shafrazi, in my opinion, had one of the best eyes in the art world. Yeah, I agree. He had a fantastic, the man understands art, hi art history and art exceptionally well. But Tony, you know, Tony has a, has a very sort of a fiery temper and, and a sort of a very expressive nature. And if that's the case, then, um, then that should make him a bad person. It's, it's, it's no, not. That, that's not, but, that's but, not bad But character. Christian Lee, who screwed everybody, willfully screwed everybody, and created scandals and got fights going between people and, 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 disappeared art and claimed one person did this and the other person did that and blamed it all on everybody else that's not an artist mm. that's 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 a curator who's walking around trying to make a name for himself by pushing people around okay let's talk about some artists who behave badly well i started off with the uh, warhol's predilections well please his sex life is else, not in well let's somebody toss up an artist say from the 80s we had herring I there's have a, a, a sweater, there's a we have, who else there's do we an have? there's an artist that both uh, Anthony and I knew and loved dearly who was a very Gosh. dear friend probably the best photographer I've ever seen he was he worked as um, um, geez, what's what's the name of the photographer who who died um, in the in we're the we're talking 80s. about Paul Blanca yes Beard? no 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 not, Paul not, Blanca yeah I'm talking about Paul Blanca but he worked for. Oh, Maplethorpe. Maplethorpe, thank yes. you. Yes, he was Butt working for yes, he was working for Maplethorpe. Maplethorpe actually described Paul Blanca as the only competition he feels he had. Oh, so, praise. but but Paul Blanca was a hardcore heroin addict and um, big time junkie who got in trouble in all in every corner of the uh, of the world did he hang out with keith richards uh n no but <laughs> but you know what the guy the guy had that very much that keith richardsy kind of a uh, thing about him but to the point where 
I mean, like some Is of the he art still that alive? no, he oh, died two well. years ago, and and um, and but it was such an interesting character. He was Holland's champion kickboxer as well. Nice. And Double this threat. guy, this guy had, I mean, had done stuff like heroin in the middle of the desert in um, in Egypt with you know the uh, some so you, you wacky hung characters. Out with him. Oh yeah, he lived at my house. He was an artist that I showed uh, at, at, the ga at my gallery. Yeah. Do you feed him breakfast? Uh, th listen, when he came. He one night. We, one night we were having a much, dinner right? party. One night we were having a dinner party. He was gonna cook. He goes to Chinatown. He comes back with a live turtle, <laughs> and he says, "Do you know how to butcher a turtle?" I'm like, "You're not butchering a table, a turtle in my kitchen." But this is a person whose art is was so magnificent. He would. But that's do the point, like, Ben. Does his hair and use defect uh, make his art mean? less important, or maybe maybe made, made, made it more important? What the, the heroin? Yeah. Of course. Listen, that is the that it's is the carte blanche. That's the carte blanche you give an artist. If, if that was the case, so, as so, you said, Caravaggio, Paganini. So being a junkie, uh, being a junkie is. Horrible for human being, but great for the artist. Like William Burroughs, right? One of your friends, mm. I'm sure, Anthony. I knew Burroughs, yeah. Oh, uh, right. I knew how he accidentally shot his wife, right? <laughs> I think he's uh, Norman Mailer now? Oh, no, no uh, Burroughs. No, Burroughs right. shot his wife. Burroughs shot his wife. And Mailer, Dead. Mailer did too, right? Well, Mailer was not gay. Ah. Mm. He didn't kick off that box, did he? Anyway, back back to the artists. But but here's about Blanca. Uh, I'll describe to you a, a few of the paintings, a few of the photographs that he took, such as razoring Mickey Mouse on his back and photographing it. Q post production. Look up files of photos to put up. Anyway, go yeah. ahead. Talk about the other Dutch artists. Why not? About Aldert. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or, or um, the other art, uh, Dutch artist who uh, recently died and who's going to be uh, showing in, I guess, 2025 or something in New York at uh, Kapow Gallery. Um, he, this was also another person who was, uh, this was an, he was an alcoholic. He was the love of my life. Uh, and he was, romance. and he was a madman to the point where all of the, uh, some of the most amazing, interesting women were, he had dated, he had been married to, and everybody left him because he, <laughs> nobody could hack him because of the two bottles a day of, of, of wine consumption. That's two nothing. bottles a day, that's uh, nothing. Uh, uh, for, for, for you a two, punker. for a you punker. two. <laughs> well, Can I have some more? <laughs> well, in the end, in the end, he died of cirrhosis of the liver. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Well, that is the bane. Ben. That and Alzheimer's are the things. Ben, that what, I have what was Aldert's great? Aldert did a great um, performance piece. Well, the, Tell me about the restaurant. The, the, perfor the performance piece. Let, let's go. Let's forget the performance piece. I want to talk about his Hitler paintings. Ah. You mean original Adolfs? Original Adolfs. Pastorals, architectural. Oh uh, no! One is is Adolf as a karaoke bar owner with a with a sprained with a neck neck brace and uh, his wife. The other one is Adolf at the laundromat Eva putting. Eva Braun. No, 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 not Eva Braun at all. Some random woman. It, it, then oh, there's is a, this there's a, a fantasy painting. picture. Well, I, yeah. thought, I thought you were thought... talking about Eva Hitler. <laughs> well, and then there's another one of, of Hitler, Hitler putting money into the dryer at a laundromat. <laughs> there's another one of Hitler, Hitler um, having, a, having had a car accident and he's sitting on the side of the road and he's being questioned by um, the police to explain what, what happened and the cop is Lyndon B. Johnson. Nice. Um, there is another it's one allegorical, of, metaphorical. Uh, it's all, I mean, it, you know, and he's got, and he's got one where he's, where he's got Hitler standing on the beach in Speedos. <laughs> since, <laughs> so. since you bring up Hitler, Hitler was, he's one, he was a failed artist. Uh, most people know that Hitler spent his early years trying to be an artist. I've actually seen Hitler's work. 
In fact, Barrett Jones owned a couple of Hitler oh, really? in his collection that I examined closely in Barrett Jones' apartment. Barrett Jones, R.I.P. For later. He self-styled most famous man in New York 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's an argument yeah. for why that might actually be accurate. So I've looked at some Hitler paintings in Barrett Jones' collection. And I have to say that I thought that they were pretty good. Okay, let me. Now, uh, here's they're boring. The character. No, I have boring. to make. No, no. I have might to... say they're boring, but I think they're pleasant. Doug. And well executed. Doug, now, I wish. Here's where the character and art comes in. I'm not going to say Adolf did fine art, but I thought it was studied and 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 pleasant at the very least. So how do you, how does one approach his 187 canvases that exist somewhere that arguably are pretty uh, well, decent uh, with his his character in history. I can give you an answer. Okay, take it uh, away. Um, Lenin was a failed artist model. There's a documentary record on that. If Lenin has succeeded in artist model and Hitler succeeded in artist, history of the last century would be rather different. Uh, yeah, that good would point. be called called deconstructivist yeah. art or or <laughs> revisionism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or, or uh, anyway, history. Aesthetic I, I don't think an artist's morality <laughs> is, unless it's totally bizarre, has anything to do with his art making or her art making. Really not. Well, uh, we're uh, getting into the twilight uh, uh, decent zone people, of bizarrity. Decent now. people make good art and people who are not particularly decent uh, make better art. You, you know, know, speaking of which, answer, I was thinking, of, I, I, you know who just popped into my mind? Remember Nikki, um, Nikki... Haslam? Huh? Has Haskell? Haslam? Nikki ha was, is, is that what... What was his name? She, she had the diet Haslam. pills, right? The guy. No, 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 no. Dead. The one, Nikki Haskell. I think it's... It, no, Nikki something or other who used to do the rectal paintings. Used oh, to do what? Yeah. The rectal paintings. Which, what was no, his no. name? No, no. Nikki? I, I don't know who that is. I've, oh, my I've, God. I've I can't remember his... I remember that. Of course over. you do. You put it in your book. It doesn't mean I remember it. Really? <laughs> True that. Touche. <laughs> Do you remember, Kurosh? Do you remember who this would have been? Let's cut this here. This is segment. I think we got a segment here. I'm Another glass of wine. Correct. So, um, we have our friend Kurosh Mapubian, the owner of Kapow Gallery, um, joining us now. And the conversation is about the nature of the artist versus the artwork, artwork itself. And I think one of the conversations that we were having earlier was about the fact that if an art, you know, does the, does the artist's character play into looking at the art and assessing the art? And, and does that make any difference on the actual quality of the work and how we how one should regard it but in which case then Caravaggio Beethoven Paganini all of these people would be in jail for being bad guys and we would never in a million years have had the pleasure of the beautiful work that they created um, and that sort of justifies what we were talking about in, in a sense earlier on it is I mean I think it's expected in a sense, that an artist would have quirks and 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 weird um, traits and 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 triggers that perhaps are um, to the average person is not acceptable or immoral. But I think that, in a sense, is what makes the art interesting because when you look at the you look at an artist's work. Um, Regardless of the person's character and personality, the art is where 
is the crossroads of the humanity of the of the person who's gazing at the work and the and the and the creation that that they're gazing at and that thing to that is to me the point where the true meaning of art um it, it, the give and take the sort of exchange of the gaze and the you know is where is um nullifies in other words the the personality and the issue and the issues that somebody might have in judging the the artist's character you know a few minutes ago you were talking about hitler mm -hmm. and uh, well for the past 35 years i've i've worked with emerging artists and and building careers of young artists and i always have to deal with this concept of where is the artist going what's the artist's work about, but in the end, it's it's the work that speaks, as as you said. It's not it's not the artist. But then you get to a place where you ask yourself, is this about the name of the artist or is it about the work? So we see a Rauschenberg, we know it's a Rauschenberg. We're very impressed because this is a very important artwork. And we look at it and we know we're supposed to love it. Um, or not, you know, if you're opposed to Rauschenberg. But, but in contrast, we would look at Adolf Hitler's work and all we can see is the name Hitler. We, mm -hmm. don't, we don't see the concept of blind appreciation of the object. In fact, when I assess artists' work, uh, especially if I'm doing it for, for foundations that ask me to jury their applicant pools and so on, we do it blind. We, we don't know who's making the work mm -hmm and we vote on, on images. But I can't help but think that even the artwork has a character. So Marina Abramovich very famously did this uh, piece where she sits in a chair and has a, a, a table full of utensils that random members of the audience can use on her. Feathers, scalpels, forks, you know, gentle things, dangerous things, and people are invited to do whatever they want, and she has faith in humanity that no one's going to actually use a scalpel to, you know, to maim her. Increasingly, over the course of three days, this got more and more aggressive and more violent, where initially people were afraid to provoke too much, and towards the end they were really pushing their limits, what can she take? Had this resulted in maiming or death or a really tragic incident, I think we would have looked at that and blamed the artwork itself. We would have said, this was a terrible artwork, someone died from it. We might have blamed the artist for going down that route. We might have blamed the person involved for engaging in murder. It's not the same thing as looking at a Picasso and saying, Picasso was a misogynist, therefore we should hate Picasso's art. We have to look at the art separately. And it, it didn't say anything about misogyny. Now we can look at Picasso and say, yes, he was a very bad man. But the art was the art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except that, except for what brings... <laughs> it reminds me of, of uh, Tom Otterness shooting the puppy, which I... Uh, funny enough, when I when I, when he came to the gallery one time, I was I, I was doing a show of Paul uh, Paul um, McMahon, and he was a fr he was a friend of Paul McMahon's, and he came to the gallery, and I I was I never uh, I, I could never bring my I love Tom Otterness's work, and when I met him, the only thing I could ask him is why the hell did you shoot the puppy? Because it was it was the one moment where. I think he the, the the I don't I don't even know how to describe it the coldness of that act to me had nothing to do with art. Well, you know the the conversation that takes place in the art world about about this subject is you know really we're talking about what is art Art is expression that communicates 
a certain content to an audience. And then we discussed, you know, is fine art uh, required to be saying something new? And, and I, th I think everyone takes it for granted that artists are always pushing the boundaries. And so if society says, you should not drink excessively, you should not uh, be addicted to heroin, you should not uh, have extramarital affairs, you should not cheat, you should, we have all these, these rules that we've established. Some of them are universals. No one wants to live in a world where we kill each other. That would be difficult. Some of these rules, on the other hand, especially when it comes to social values like identity, you know, homosexuality used to be frowned upon and now it's more accepted as a general societal norm. Uh, and increasingly we will find these areas, and it is the artist's role to, to communicate this thought. Yeah. What did Thomas Ness say? Oh, he, he really, uh, I mean, I think he was kind of saddened that I brought it up, and he, but he was very gracious. He said, he said you know, that is something I, I live with. It was something like, I, it's something I live with, and, I'm, and I will always regret it. And I've always come to regret it, and, 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 I, and it's been years that has haunted me everywhere I go, and it's the one thing when people think, talk, think about me, they think of me shooting the puppy. They don't think of all of the other stuff that I've done, which is sad. It's but true. Don't argue that that is, in fact, exactly a, a question of a universal. Everyone agrees shooting puppies is a pretty bad thing to do. Yeah. And yet an artist decide to do it in the name of art, and, well, that's rejected. It's to be expected. You know, I mean, look, to me, there's also people like, um, I mean, there's, um, what's the name of the artist? Why am I forgetting it? Um, the guy who um, nailed himself to the... To the Chris Burden. Chris Burden, yes, thank you, Chris Burden. The guy who nailed himself to the, to the Volkswagen. Yeah. Um, also shot himself, I think it was. I think he did shoot himself. I, 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 yeah, I can't remember where he, where he shot himself. In a, in, a, in a garage, outside a garage in a county in Los Angeles. It was called Crucifixion, I think. Yeah, um, but what, what about the self-shooting? Oh, that was outside the garage. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the details. I knew Chris Burn a little bit. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, how is he relevant to this discussion? No, well, that, that's the thing. It's about, the, 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 you know, how far an artist is willing to go and what motivates them to go. Well, that's that. not to do with their moral character. I think an artist's character is hugely important. It doesn't necessarily have to be good in a conventional way. As long as they're expressing themselves accurately and honestly in their art, that's the main the, thing. The, wouldn't you agree that it, it seems that what we're all looking for from the artist is an honest, authentic statement. Well, of course, yes. That's, that, that, that's sort of the starting point that we take for granted, that this artist has to be speaking some sort of truth to us. Yes, except that I think that, that, that we lost that with postmodernism. But I even query that, actually. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I'm, look at a great painter like... The sergeant, the American portrait artist, came to England. We know, now know, he actually more or less hated his subjects. You wouldn't know that looking at the painting, you know. The paintings remain very great paintings. And um, a lot of us have tangled feelings which they do not necessarily express in their work. Yeah, but the thing is, is that, the, that not... Um the ones that do express it have since postmodernism become extremely self-referential in ways that not um, every uh, every person looking at the piece gets, and that's what's frustrating. That I, that people have expressed to me um, as a frustrating uh, point of of postmodern art. Do you think good art is good art? People have visual talent and they try and express in canvas. Maybe they're not expressing the truth all the time. 
Yes, maybe but what that, is, tell me what is what what does Carl Andre, for example, address with his with his um, tiles? I think you were say bringing that up because of the death of his mistress. No, no, I'm talking. No, um, I, mean, I have uh, other than the fact that his mistress was ki was killed, died, fell out the window, whatever. Or, or was for, thrown out the window. Or yep. was thrown out the window. Besides that. I, because I, I'm sorry. There are certain artists whose work I still don't, I, I don't, I don't get, and I'm yeah, not I, I don't know embarrassed what, to say it. I don't. Like, know. I don't understand Barry Levar. I don't understand um, Donald Judd. I don't understand Carl Andre. I just don't understand and it because there's nothing Mauricio to understand. Kella. Huh? Mauricio Catalan. No, Mauricio, Mauricio Catalan. I like because it, not all of his work is, is. Characterless, for for the lack of a better word, to me, Carl Andre, Barry Levar, and 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 um, uh, Donald Judd um, are just. I, I, I mean, that's the thing about having lived through the eighties. I mean, I kept going to gallery from gallery to gallery, and all I kept looking at was blank. Minimalism reduced to its minimal. I exactly. think Ma I think Marietta Catalan. His current, uh, I think, uh, Banksy is very like Mauricio Catalan. Well, they, it's a, it's they, they, they come up with huge, wonderful events that they find a yeah. visual way of expressing. Yes, it's a thumbing the nose while showing that it, it's turning the technical skill on its, on its head. You know, yeah. turning it upside down because they have the skill. Mauricio Catalan can do more than, you know, duct tape a banana to a yeah, wall yeah but to reverse it and say here we go this is art no but i think that it, but i think it, that it, it leaves it leaves so much for the discussion of society and and what else is it no, no, but, there was, but there is another thing about also about maurizio catalan because the thing that he always is that he's always done is that he has always been somebody who has um commented through his work on the nature of things, on the state of affairs, on on the conditions, and and anything that you can possibly imagine that would constitute humanity, the world, the art world, the ma microcosm, the macrocosm. You know, he he really um, puts thought into it. And the banana taped to the wall, as far as I'm concerned, is as expressive and as hilarious as 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 can be i mean it, it reminds me there was another dutch artist stanley brown you went to you came with me to this opening we went it was daniel newberg was showing him and da stanley brown was a very well known and very well respected um performance artist but installation maker as well and he had just done something crazy, like traveled around the world on a, on a sailboat or something like that. And then he came back and he did a show for, that was based, based on you know, his experience of having traveled the world. And so we went to the clock tower down, down in Tribeca because we thought that that was where the show was. We arrive at the clock tower, there's nothing there. And we're like, he goes, this is the piece. And I'm thinking, mm, I think you're lazy, man. And <laughs> now I'm sorry, but y you have hundreds of people coming to your opening and there's nothing to see. What is that, the emperor's new clothes? And so that to me is, is, is an absurdity. I, I, and, you know, and for me, Abramovich lost her edge when she and Ulai separated. Because to me, Ulai was the one who had the goods. I didn't know either of them, so... Satanists I met I, By the way, after the nailing of the banana, I was called by the New York Post to ask if I'd done that. <laughs> <laughs> you would. <laughs> I, I don't know if you remember being in, in Florida at that time. You were there when, in, at Basel when the banana... No, this was in a gallery, a national gallery, some gallery. No, no, but, but we were both in Miami when, when the banana was the hit. Mm. And all over Miami, <laughs> all of the stores 
had bananas taped to their windows. It was, that was the height of absurdity. And of course you have the Andy banana put on the cover of the, the, the Velvet Underground. Velvet Underground. That's right. Which was such a flop that they, he was fired as a manager. Well, the banana is obviously a penis equivalent, right? Um, but that's the thing. Except you can peel it and eat to it. The, to the wall. I mean, why couldn't it be like a white tape versus a blue tape? You know, I, I mean, so. It was duct tape. Okay, but the color was blue. It was a blue. Wasn't it blue? A no, blue. It was silver. Blue, it was it silver? Yeah. Oh, okay. For some bizarre reason, I thought it was blue. But okay, so Unless why memory, why duct silver. tape versus, for example, the 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 blue tape that you put to painter's tape or something? You, you know, I mean, the choice of tape could even be in and of itself a funny discussion. I like and, the duct and, tape. And the, oh, I do too. <laughs> I do too. And that's that's the thing because the duct tape, you can think of it as something that is is. A utilitarian and object, especially that, when yeah. you're tying up prisoners. Let me. We're, we're getting away from artists and character. And I see no reason why really evil people can't write well and make good painting. Why the hell not? But, but you have to, Anthony. My point is the object is the object. Yeah. So, the artwork speaks for itself. If the evil is so big that the artwork has now become all about the evil. Okay, speak for itself. Then, then the artwork is affected. If not, then it's not. So, so by that logic, we look at a Hitler painting and we say, oh, it's awful because Hitler made it. We look at a Picasso painting well, yeah, because you know Picasso that, is a misogynist, but this painting's good. Yeah, you know those people are. If you look at a routine, you can see this is a very agonized individual. Yeah. You don't know whether he's a good or bad person, you know. Normally, but, you know about Hitler because we know about history, you know, but normally when you look at work of art, you cannot, there's no way of deducing the artist's moral character. That's exactly what I'm saying. What okay, I'm saying okay. is that in, in every work of art, we look at it, we say, mm -hmm. wow, until we get to a point where we know this work of art was done, for example, by Adolf Hitler, but not, never mind Hitler. Um, immediately following Woody Allen's story with his daughter, stepdaughter Soon Yi, everybody stopped watching Woody Allen movies. Eventually, they went back to them. Eventually, they said, oh, these movies are great. Yeah, Woody Allen, I'm not so sure about, but his movies are good. Yeah. But there is a point in our psyche when all we see is what we want to see. Therefore, if you're looking at the artwork and it has become overwhelmed by the circumstances, mm -hmm. We're seeing the Tell me things. one artist who's so evil I should not look at his work. Adolf Hitler. Well, he's not an artist. Yes, he was. You can't just this, this guy. Listen, the guy had technical ability and he has a body of work. You can't dismiss Hitler as an artist. He was a boring artist. Doug likes his work. Okay, I find him boring. That said, there's no denying that the guy was... I've not really artist. looked at the work. Maybe I should give another. Maybe, sh maybe you should give him a show. No, uh, where I don't have a gallery anymore, and I don't want to be in the art not world anymore. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and not at a Jewish gallery. And find some. Find some of Lenin's <laughs> modeling photographs. Hmm? Yeah. Find some photographs that were taken of Lenin when he was. Trying to be a oh, male model. A he was apparently too short. There's a hilarious this this story I've got to tell, and you'll know this story. Doug, don't go away. This story you've got to hear. When the revolution started in Iran, the um, the brand new and beautiful, just about to open uh, Museum of Contemporary Art had just um, was was being launched. When the Khomeiniist loonies decided to <laughs> tear up the, the gallery, the, the, the paintings and the art, some guy goes up to a Fontana pa slash painting it says it's already and been says, damaged. oh, it's already been damaged, I'm going to walk away. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought they, I thought they slashed a Warhol. They did slash a Warhol. Um, they, they slashed many of, of the pieces, but at the same time, um, you know, when they looked at the Fontana, because it was a slash painting, it was, they left it alone. Who was the guy, I met, I spoke to the guy, who did that show? He was the Empress's cousin, Yeah, right? it was, it was Kamran Diba. Kamran Diba, yeah, yeah, He was yeah, a good yeah. guy. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but you know, I thought that that has always stayed in my mind as one of the funniest stories about the survival of of art by <laughs> in a, in in its most bizarre form. Not to, not that it has anything to do with the personality. So tell me of the one person, artist but... who is considered so loathsome that no one will look at his art. Apart from, don't talk so about Hitler. You're, a, you're asking a question that can't be answered. If nobody's looking at his art, how would we? How well, would we, we know he exists? People, people would have looked into this by now and well, checked let's it. Let's look at canceling. And for instance, it's, this is in the realm of music art. But Gary Glitter, who had a couple yep. of big hits. Yep. And David Essex. And David Essex. And David Essex. And they got canceled. What happened with David Essex? Of, he was a child molester. And then, and then music is full of it. Uh, David Bowie, right before he died, was banging like two teenage girls at a time on record. And Google it. It's true. Who, who, who? David Bowie. In his 70s, well, he was banging we, teenage eyes. I like, I admire uh, David Bowie enormously. Me too. We do, we do have to ask the question, though. It comes back to this thought of artists doing what's new and, and, and changing society. The idea that you shouldn't have sex with a minor well, is, is a big question. Back in how college, do you, define, you how used do you define to say old enough to bleed, old enough. To well, but how do you how do you define yeah. a minor, and and in what culture, you know? And in what epoch of history? That, if precisely. you go back 150 years, you know, uh, fertile teenage girls were legal and marriageable, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. The, they were expected to be mature adults at 16 and householding wives. Yeah, but. I think, years. sorry, I think it should all be about people old enough to accept and to know what's going on. Yeah, and I to, agree. And to, and push the boundaries. The, no, the question, the question, though, is what is that age? What well, is, what no is doubt it varies from individual to individual. What is right and what's wrong? What, how do we define? Is this something that is arbitrary or is it something that is legitimate? Five generations ago, we defined adult women marriageable at 15 or 16 and they were expected to be the the dom de la household at 16 and it was normal now we push the boundaries of maturity every decade in to now you're not a full adult if you're a young person, male or female, until you're in your 30s now. No, it's not totally not true. It, it, uh, sorry, fact, seven, I, 17, or, feed, sorry, 17 or 18 feed, is I considered... I today that half... Where did you... Half this is, this is nonsense. Young people in America, up to 35, are living with their parents. Well, I don't care where they're living. Parents. I don't care where they're living. It's who they relate to people with enough uh, accept to have sexual relations with, and that's people are old enough by and large to 17 or 18, in my opinion. But, but here, here Amen. We, uh, all of that being said, I'm here, all about leaving here we are having the discussion that art answers. Hmm. Through the creation of art, the artist is imparting opinion for the audience about how we perceive right and wrong, how we perceive reality, how we perceive everything. It's perception. Ethics, morality. All of, all of that. So looking at a piece of art, and you know, I, I had a group of um, young boys coming into a gallery where I curated a show, and um, there was a pizza parlor outside, and this is a suburban gallery I was consulting to, and, and I thought the boys were having pizza. But they're looking into the window, and there is some nude imagery. And so I opened the door and I invited them in. I said, we are an art gallery and you're all welcome to come in anytime you like. And a few of the boys quickly got on their bicycles, actually all of them quickly got on their bicycles and ran away. So what, what, what's, they your point? what's your point? You'll, you'll get it in a second. Five minutes later, they come back and I hear fighting outside, argument, and I pop my head out from the back to see who's out there, and I see it's the same boys. Three of the boys want to go in, 
the others don't want to go in, and there's an argument about this. Well, you're a, you know, you're a wimp, and, and well, I'm going to go in, and no, I don't want to go in. And so, three boys come in, and I show them around the gallery, and I'm explaining the nature of the work, and there is a strong sexual content to some of the work. And I look at them and I say, so you, you guys in high school? And they said, oh, well, no, no, we're in eighth grade. So you've done sixth grade biology. Yes, of course. So I don't need to explain this to you. This artist is talking about beauty and the beauty that exists in the cycle of life, which includes things like reproduction and and it includes things like death and decay. Birth is not always pretty to look at, but these are all the concepts that this artist deals with. So we went through the gallery and, and showed them a lot of things. These are all eighth grade boys who by the time they've left, they look at me and they say, so and this was in New Jersey, they said, so this is a New York gallery that's made a mini gallery in our town? And I said, no, this is not a mini gallery. This is a New York gallery that's opened up an actual art gallery for you, for you to come in and look. And they were blown away. And they, they thought, wow, you know, I'm worthy of coming into this place. I'd like to come back. The final discussion was, well, you came in here with preconceptions. You thought a bunch of things. You look at an artwork. You have a conversation with yourself. Maybe you really agree with what the artwork's saying. And so, this reinforces my values. It makes me feel good about myself. I believe more strongly in my convictions. Maybe the artwork showed you something you've never thought about. Now you've been enlightened, your mind's been expanded, you've got new things to think about. You've been transported. Mm -hmm. Transported is exactly right. Thank you. Maybe you disagree with what you're seeing and you hate it with a passion and you're having a fight with yourself over why you hate it, but you're only talking to yourself and the art. So you've had a conversation in which you've questioned your values, you've questioned your ethics, you've questioned everything you understand, and you're leaving an altered person. It's sort of like you just read a good book. You've been transported. Yeah. I'd like to make a other... This is an eighth grade mind coming in. And that's what the artist does. And so when we're talking about sex and bad things and character, it's all part of this context. What, what sex is not. I want to make a slightly shorter point. Um, when I was 13, 14, 15, 16, I made a drawing of a couple of people having it off. Yeah. I got it totally wrong. I hid it behind a wooden panel of the school I was going to. It's probably still there. Recently, I was speaking with 14 and 15 year olds, the children, grandchildren of friends. Is it Gordon uh, They're frighteningly aware. They've been watching online porn. You know, they, they know so much more than my generation did. It's um, they're incredibly knowing. So it's a different scene, you know. Um, and rather, it's rather significant, I think. I'd love to jump in for a second. No, you're not permitted. Going back, going back literally 25 years, the statistics showed... Here, I can... You want a chair? Yeah, well... Come on in. I, I will move out. The, we'll move Anthony out. The statistics showed 25 years ago... Of course, you're a frightening statistic that 25 years ago, young... Adolescent boys, 25 years ago, were seeing so much internet porn that they were being desensitized to both sex and sexual relations with the opposite sex to the point where they couldn't relate to real girls because they were watching so much porn. Now, I get that. Because when I was a kid, Playboy, I mean, barely even had pubic hair. And that's what we had. <laughs> 25 years back, these kids, including the girls, are watching so much porn that they're completely desensitized at 12 years old. I have ex-girlfriends that are mothers. Oh, this is a... You can... The research is out there. 
the research is out there, the internet, the internet's biggest thing since it started was pornography and kids accessed it going back to the beginnings of the internet. And it's, it's mentally changed the actual neural dynamics of adolescence from watching all of that intercourse and the anal and the every other thing where it affects the rest of their lives. They, they don't respond. They have not been responding. They, children, kids, adolescents have not been responding to all the normal interactions in every previous generation in human history before porn because they respond differently now. Their brains are wired differently from the experience of seeing so much porn as Dr. kids. Ramos, has that improved or worsened male oh, female It's the, the, the relations between men and women, young people, we're reaching a nadir every day that's lower than the day before. I mean, the relations between men and women and, and young people between each other, heterosexually speaking, have, have been diminished, have been, have been denatured from porn, media, and society for generations now. We're at a new low. That's one of my arguments, and, you can, and I refer everybody to Douglas Deschert discusses what went wrong with the sexual revolution on YouTube. I touch on that for an hour and a half, and there's more to come. Of course, I'd like to say one thing. Now, cut.